everyone so today i'm gonna try to explain to you why a google is way bigger than you think so first of all um a google is uh agreed by most people that it is the beginning of big numbers in googleology in other words it's the smallest number in googleology however even <laughs> Uh, if it's the uh, smallest number in Googleology, it's still way, way, way bigger than you think. So first of all, let's look at the number trillion, which is, I think, uh, most ordinary people uh, would think uh, the biggest number they have ever heard of. So anyway, a trillion is 10 to the power of 12, one followed by 12 zeros, and a Google is 10 to the 88 times bigger than a trillion. So in other words, 88 orders of magnitude bigger than a trillion. So trillion already is uh, a pretty big number that most people couldn't visualize, but a Google is 88 orders of magnitude bigger than that. So next big number is 52 factorial, which is the number of ways to arrange a deck of cards. And I believe there's a lot of videos just to show you how big it is. I think most people get mind blown by this video. You can try to watch it yourself. But anyway, 52 factorial is around 10 to the power of 68, but compared to a Google is very small. In fact, it's 10 to the 32 times smaller, which is in other words, 32 orders of magnitudes smaller than a Google. So next, what if you try to count to a Google? So what if you can count one number per second? How long would that take? So if you try to count to a Google, it will take around 10 to the 93 years to count to a Google, since there are 32 million seconds per year and around, in other words, around 10 to the seven seconds per year, it will take 10 to the 93 years to count to a Google. But what if you can count much faster, let's say one number per Planck time. So Planck time is the shortest amount of time in physics, much, much shorter than a nanosecond, something like that. But anyway, a Planck time is equal to around 10 to the minus 43 seconds. In other words, uh, in one second, there are 10 to the 43 Planck time which is a lot of playing time anyway, you couldn't imagine how short it is. And um, so if you can count one number per playing time, it will take around 10 to the 50 years to count a Google. Still <laughs> a very, very long time, even if you can count that fast. And just for comparison, the age of the universe since Big Bang is around 10 to the, I mean, 13.8 billion years, which is around 10 to the 10 years. So 10 to the 50 years is 10 to the 40 times longer than the age of the universe. So pretty insane. So next, uh, how long is a Google Planck length? So Planck length, again, is the shortest amount of, uh, of length or distance in physics. So just to show you, I mean, quickly explain to you one uh, the speed of light is the fastest speed in the universe and in one Planck time, light travels exactly one Planck length, just to let you know. But anyway, in one meter, there are 10 to the 35 Planck lengths. So in other words, a Planck length is equal to around 10 to the minus 35 meters. So it's a very short amount of distance. And a Google Planck length is around 10 to the 65 meters. And for comparison, the observable universe has a diameter of around 10 to the 27 meters. In other words, a Google Planck length is 10 to the 38 times bigger than the observable universe. So try watch some videos on the size of the universe on YouTube. There are a lot of videos and I think 99.9% .9 of people get mind blown by that because it, even the Earth, as big as it is, is tiny compared to the observable universe, but the universe is nothing compared to Google anyway. And the next example would be grains of sand. I think this is one of the most mind-blowing thing about Google. So now try go outside and grab a handful of sand. How many are there on your hand or in your hand? Pretty a lot already, I believe. But now let's look at you know, try look at a canyon or a beach or the ocean. Try to imagine how many grains of sand can you fit in a canyon or beach or ocean. Try imagine, you know, how many grains of sand can you fill up the Pacific Ocean or the Atlantic Ocean, whatever. I think most people would 
be mind blown or speechless or they would say I don't know probably a gazillion <laughs> grains of sand I don't know but in fact is nowhere near near a Google in fact even if you try to fill the entire observable universe with grains of sand it was still you will still not reach Google so if you try to fill out the entire observable universe with grains of sand, it will be around 10 to the 90. In other words, you will need 10 billion universe to fill a Google grains of sand. And I just told, tell you that the observable universe is very big if you try to watch those videos. But even if you try to fill something that big with grains of sand, you will still not reach Google. So Google is way bigger than you think. So the last example I'm trying to give you here is hydrogen atoms, which is, I believe, the smallest physical object in the universe, you know, at least physical object in terms of, you know, actual thing, not a Planck length, because Planck length is just a me the shortest measurement of space. It's not actually a physical object that exists that you can touch, whatever, you know, because a physical object has to be either gas, solid, or liquid, or aqueous, something like that. So anyway, the hydrogen atom is the smallest atom or the lightest atom. It has a mass of around 10 to the minus 24 grams. So how much or how big is 10 to the 100? So or, or how big is a Google hydrogen atoms? So a Google hydrogen atoms has a mass of around 10 to the 76 grams or 10 to the 73 kilogram. You know, you just do the simple math here. And it has a, um, if it's a sphere, then it will be, it will have a diameter of around 10 to the 74, um, I mean, 10 to 74 cubic meters in volume. So actually it's smaller than the observable universe. The universe is around 10 to the 80 meter cube. And for your information, the observable universe has around 10 to the 80 atoms, so less than a Google atoms actually. And it has a mass, the observable universe has a mass of around 10 to the 53 kilograms. So actually a Google hydrogen atoms is way 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 more massive than the mass of the observable universe but it has a smaller volume than the observable universe so actually would it turn into a black hole that's our first question so let's look at here so you can go online try to search for the Schwarzschild radius uh, calculator and you would find out that uh, this amount of mass, 10 to the 73 kilograms, um, I mean a black hole with 10 to the 73 kilograms in mass would have a Schwarzschild radius, or in other words, a event horizon of around 10 to the 46 meters in radius, which is around 10 to the 138 meters cube. So, um, so this would be your volume of this black hole, at least in terms of event horizon. So clearly you can see that this is way bigger than this one. So, and some of you already know if you study black holes, the definition of a black hole is that any object whose physical radius smaller than its Schwarzschild radius is a black hole or it will turn into a black hole. So obviously you can see that the physical radius of your hydrogen atom, which is 10 to the 74 meters cube, is smaller than a Schwarzschild radius, which is 10 to the 138 meters cube. Therefore, your Google hydrogen atoms will turn into a black hole. And, um, and your black hole, your, hi your Google hydrogen atoms black hole, would be this would have a radius of 10 to the 46 meters. So 10 to the 19 times bigger than this radius of the observable universe. So there you have it, you know, a, a Google hydrogen atoms will form a black hole way, way, way bigger than the size of the observable universe. And in, again, the hydrogen atom is the smallest object in the universe. In other words, basically what it means is that you cannot have a Google of any physical object in one place because it would 
turn into a black hole. Actually, you don't even need a Google object. It's way smaller than a Google object would already turn into a black hole. So anyway, um, this is my video on why Google is way bigger than you think. If the universe blows your mind, then big numbers blows your mind even more so. Anyway, thanks for watching and have a nice day.